Welcome YouTubers, it's Matt here from Hobby Spot NZ and today we're going to be doing, for the first time ever, a uh, painting tutorial. Uh, so we're going to be doing, uh, we're going to be looking at the contrast paints, which everyone has been reviewing, uh, it seems like, on YouTube at the moment. I'm going to show you a little something a little bit different, how to do mounts quickly, because the mounts, uh, for me anyway, are the, is the bane of my life. So, to have something that can quickly do these guys and uh, and smash them out, and then be able to focus more time on the rider is a, is a bonus to me. So we're going to be talking about that today. Now, we're going to be using uh, a couple different colors from the GW range, which is the contrast paints. Um, we'll start off with the WAG, and I will show you how we'll start with him. So, as you can see, it's always good to have a reference image. So I'm working off these guys. Now, I'm going to go a wee bit different color scheme to those. They're a little bit generic for me. Uh, I'm just going to hit it with a, a darker kind of brown, uh, which is going to be, I think, Saigor Brown. And we'll just grab it out here. We'll go for Wildwood uh, in the contrast. Wildwood? Yeah. So this is a nice paint. They say uh, one thick coat. Um, I probably wouldn't do one thick coat, I would just thin it out a little bit. You don't necessarily need one thick coat. I find um, where the contrast comes in is when you do it lighter. Uh, so we're just going to put like a bit of a clump down here on the makeshift palette. This is also the, you know, it doesn't have to be a wet palette or anything like that. Let's just sit that there. Okay, so we're going to grab Mr. Wolf and see if I can get this. Bear with me, this is the first time doing this so we're just going to apply it gingerly and we have had the, we did use the um gw uh, undercoat which is the uh gray sear i think it's called um but as you can see already you can see that detail popping through there that's working its magic and to be able to do mounts like this for your entire army you know i'm quite an all mounted sort of a person so I like to, when I'm doing mounted uh, either cavalry or likes the wags, likes these guys, uh, I like to really lay it on uh, relatively thick with um, with cavalry troops. Now, um, this Wildwood I find is, is one of the better um, brown colors. And what we're going to do is we're just going up to the cheeks here. Um, of course, their, their faces are gray, so we won't do their faces, but we will do his little goatee there. You see that on the front, and we will do under his tail, and I just like to work side to side. So we're going to go in there, up underneath, work to there. Also, just going to come over the top here, do the back. Again, I, I am I'm not applying this really thin. It is uh, it is you know relatively thick here. So I do need a wee bit more. Now the contrast paints, um, I find, are really nice because you can use a lot of different techniques with these to get um, awesome little fast paced um, objectives. So you can go through and do all the faces of your army, you know, with the um, the flesh, or if you're doing something like a, a goblin town, you know, with all the goblins, or if you're doing, you know, something in Age of Sigma where you've got, you know, a guys with a lot of flesh, um, then it's absolutely great to go in here and, and bulk paint that sort of stuff. Now you'll find um, that this stuff is good for doing, you know, a lot of the work relatively quickly. But you, and you know, if you're if you're not a painter, this standard would be fine. Um, me myself, uh, I like I like a little bit of extra detail, and I find that when I if I just do the um, contrast paints, it's not a good enough standard for me. So um, we're going to keep going in here, here. So just under the chin. Uh, do his goatee. You can do up under the eye. Probably won't bother too much. Um, now, if you were more, um, you know, um, perceptive about filling in gaps and bits and bobs, you would probably go ahead and do that. I haven't done it for this model because it's just a tutorial model. Um, but I generally don't go ahead and see. There's a big gap there in the shoulder. I generally don't go and um, fill that anyway. Now he's just got a wee bit on the top there, which we will try and. Get on there. Easy. So basically you're just going ahead and, and painting in all the fur. Now I've left these bits out for a reason. Um, we'll come back and do that with a different colour shortly. But for the most part, uh, I'll just get under his leg there. Um, that's all that you're going to be painting really. 
that's pretty much him. So, let's see if I can get a better close up here. You can see already the colours that are coming through for that that small little batch that we've just done now. And of course, if you're doing a few of these guys, you can smash these out relatively quickly. Um, now we'll just get them in behind the leg, get some of that fur. But he's good to go in terms of fur. Now we'll leave it at that for him. Just rinse your brush. You don't want anything polluting for this stage. Now we'll leave him at that point. Now the horse, we can do something a little bit different. We might go, um, where are we? Snake bite. I think we would probably go um, Gore Gunter Fur, which is kind of an, uh, a ready origin, uh, orange kind of um, texture, and it's almost very closely to um, Ratskin Flesh, which is Ratskin? I think it's Ratskin Flesh. So again, we're just going to um, put some down on the, on the palette down here. And we're just going to get into it. So, this is a horse from a Rivendell Knight model, and uh, he has quite a complex horse model in terms of the horse models that they have come out with from GW. Like some of the, um, uh, like the Riders of Rohan and the um, the Gondor um, warriors are not as detailed as this. And I have painted up eighteen of these so far. Uh, Within the stand in the standard way before um, Games Workshop's contrast come out, and I'm kicking myself now <laughs> because it could have saved myself such a long time. But anyway, here we go. So on this model, you can see it's not all completely spray painted white. Um, you can see that there's some little dark bits in here as well. Now I've gone for the zenith kind of highlight on there, which has meant I've just given it a spray from one or two angles and left some recesses. Now that can add a little bit of darkness to different areas that you can add, which is quite nice. Um, but I mean, well, for now, um, you know, you could just highlight this even, you could just spray this evenly rather and get away with it. That's absolutely fine. I've done this just to give it a wee bit extra depth. But honestly, you just go straight on there, start applying it, um, go right down. I'm not going to get too technical right down to the hoof or anything like that. I'm just going to do, do rough as I can. And I'm going to try not to bump the camera all the time. <laughs> Forgive me guys, this is my first uh, paint video, so we, there will be a wee bit of trial and error here. And we're going to go into here, some of that underneath. And you can see already how nice that's looking. It's nice, shiny, good coverage, good sticking. Now, one of the things about contrast is that you can add the mediums. Now, I have never have added the mediums. I, f I find that these, I can just water it down and the, uh, and the pigments turn out the way I want it. Um, you certainly could. You can see now the difference in that to that, just because of the, the, the texture difference. It's a wee bit hard to look upside down, but you can see there this texture, because it's applied thinly, uh, is a lot lighter. So actually, if you were to let this dry for, I think it takes, they reckon about half an hour or something like that. If you let it dry for half an hour, and then you come back and did another coat, you could get a darker range. So exactly like you do when you're doing highlighting, um, heaps of thin layers, building it up. You can do, you can absolutely do the same for um, for contrast paints. You can add a thin layer, adds all the recesses in. Then if you want a darker layer, um, you can go ahead and do that as well. So you can see guys how fast this is. This is this is not taking me any time at all. Um, you could go ahead. Oh, I could even be faster this. Honestly, the camera is um, making it a little bit awkward. But I could I could pump these out a bit faster if I wanted. And the reason why I'm I, I gave these as an example is because every in everyone's army, well, most people's army, there is um, a mounted model of some kind, or it's a or it's a monster, or it's a you know, if you're talking Age of Sigma, there's all sorts of different creatures in there. Things like birds, um, you know, monsters, creatures, griffins, all that kind of stuff. Um, Lord of the Rings, you're talking about trolls and um, bats and foul beasts and all that kind of stuff. Um, so there's always, an I think there's always going to be an application for this in your toolbox. And it's, it's one of those things that's like you go from... Um, you know, you've got your layers and your bases, and then you've got your highlights. This is just another tool to add to your um, selection, which is just going to make it so much nicer um, to get through in a, in a quick paint session. I find um, that tournaments uh, motivate me to, to paint 
And um, I found, I was thinking that this little application, you know, just bringing you a couple of paint tutorials, uh, especially in, in regards to the contrast paints, um, would be quite cool. Just to give you a little bit of um, perspective on what projects I'm working on and, um, yeah, and what you guys can do with, um, with contrast paints. So we've got that side mostly done. Um, I might change brush for the face, it's because I want to be want to be tidy, and I know I am flipping this model up quite a bit, uh, but that's just to get in all those nooks and crannies. You could be like, this is quite a thick brush, um, I could use a, a thinner brush, um, but this is just rough and ready. Now you want to be quite detailed on this bit. I think the neck would be uh, the neck's going to be okay to do um, just with a thick brush, but I think when it comes to that part on his face, I might use a thinner brush. Just get up under there, get the rest of his neck. It doesn't you don't have to be too tidy with it. You can actually go back afterwards and use like um, like another white base. Um, I try not to because it keeps every time you keep adding that base layer on, it keeps thickening it up, especially if you're, let's say you stuffed up around the eyes here, and you're like, okay, well I'm going to go back over it, and I'm going to um, repaint it, um, you're just going to be careful you don't keep adding too much detail, too much thickness to that um, to that face area. Now I think I could probably do his nose with this brush, and his neck, I mean his reins isn't going to be too bad, I forget a bit on that, but... You could just slap one big thick coat on here and that would be absolutely fine. So we're going to transition now to uh, the a smaller brush. And we're going to use the same colour and we're just going to come in. Now I'm just going to be have to get that on a bit of a different angle. We are probably going to have a wee bit of spillage. Because my hands aren't the sturdiest. I'm not going to make a surgeon, that's for sure. It doesn't matter if you get a little bit on the reins there, that's absolutely fine. The thing is that if you do get it on the reins, you can A, go back and do it again later like I just said before, or you can leave it and it adds a wee bit of extra, um, adds a little bit of extra definition to the to the little belts and stuff like that. I mean it could just be a bit of muck, it could be a bit of grit, could be a bit of you know like a fold in the material. You just don't know. It just adds like, you know, you can you can get away with little blobs. If it was quite an obvious thing like um like scales or uh perhaps fur and there was a random blotch on the fur, you might have to try and tattoo that up. I'll just come in here. Now I'm in the way. Get some of that done, get the nose done. Oh, bumpty bumpty. Now, this is a little bit difficult to get on here because I am not left handed. But if I was, it would come in handy. Let's do under his chin there. And we're still on the first, you know, we haven't had to re dip or anything like that. So, rough and ready, that is pretty much done. So we're going to give that, um, there's going to be a part two to this video, I'm going to show you what, what the outcome of it is going forward. Um, you can see that, that that's pretty good quality, it's not too bad, looking alright. Uh, I will do the main, and I'll do the face of the WAG, and then we'll come back in another video and show you... Um, how I progress from there, but we'll quickly do the main. Uh, where are we? We need a. We're gonna say black templar for this one for black main. Black templar I found is a really nice color because you can use it as a black or you can use it as a like a really light gray depending on how thick you use it. I'm gonna go quite thick with this one because I want him to have a black main. But if you're doing like a gray sort of a gun, um, you can do it in a thinner like a much thinner. Um, consistency and get away with a grey which is really nice and for the wag when we do the wag's face um we'll be using a really thin because on on the in the detailed images it's um they're grey not black faces for the um the wags so 
but either or either, you could do the wag faces brown or whatever you like, it doesn't really matter. It's just what you ever, whatever you think is good. I'm just going to slap it on here, just get under there. Again, just not being that ginger. You can see already, see these little, like these definitive lines that are coming through. Now, not only um, do I think that contrast is a really good paint, but I think it's uh, it's it's probably better as a teaching tool to teach people um, where to highlight properly. So you can see straight away there that there's the light on the edges. That's where you should be highlighting if you're highlighting. I mean, I would just dry brush that. But on bits of flat surfaces like um, here, for example, if you were to try and highlight that, you would kind of you wouldn't really know. You'd just be sort of guessing if unless you had a bit of experience in that before. Um, but you'd just be guessing really. So it's a good it's a good indicator of, of where you should be highlighting and and you know what kind of positions that those sorts of lights are coming in at. Especially with that zenith uh, zenith oil highlight that you can do, um, just brings that out a little bit better. But look, we're just being we're not even being that accurate here. This is just a quick tutorial. You can be a lot more sturdy than me. I'm just doing this sort of, you know, just rough and ready. Now, if you're if you're a good painter, you'll realise that these paints probably aren't for you. If I mean, you've probably already got a good standard of what of how you paint and what you usually do. Um, these are for the guys who don't paint, who um, don't have a lot of time. You know, they've got maybe a couple days, two or three days before the next tournament. They've got an army, and they want to just slap something out, or or they don't paint at all, uh, and they just want to get something table ready. Uh, this is definitely the way more for them than it is for the pro painters. I mean, the the pro paint guys. This is probably going to help them with a little bit of time, but they're still going to be still going to have their ways of of doing what they do. So. Blacks are on, looking pretty good. Now when that dries, we'll show you the result. Um, I'll do the saddle and stuff as well for you. Now I, I'm quite a big, um, <laughs> I shouldn't say contrast, but I, I'm a, I'm a, I like to differentiate my colors. So like if I'm doing a, a brown horse I like to have black hair or if I'm doing a blonde horse I like to have white hair or something like that so I like to have like really um, stark differences between the colors um, so this one we're going to be using is the um, Saigor brown which is a dark kind of a brown I would say it's more in line with um, Rhinox hide uh, so that kind of um, you know color and we're just literally just going to go straight over the top of that not being too accurate and just coming into here now obviously this has been quite messy because I've got shaken like a leaf in the wind here but um, you can see already it's relatively tidy for because we just even that up we can go over the other stuff as well I'll flip them around and actually I'll close that lid before it goes for a skate because that does happen from time to time happens to the best of us we will back over that one now I could do the reins in this color as well um, I don't think I will I think I'll hand paint the reins um, I don't think I you know get a wee bit of extra detail you could definitely um, put you know this color on it we, we probably could I'll, just for the just for the, the out of interest we'll do the reins now you could use a way more detailed brush on this. This is like a number uh, two. It's a um, Ramada uh, Galinsky, um, but you know you could use like you could use more detail than that. This is just like really rough and ready. It's just slapping it on really, slapping the base. It's all it's doing. To there, rough and ready, rough and ready, and there we go. So, for the most part, that's looking pretty good. Now, if I was going forward with that, I'd probably put some um, of this stuff on the on the hoofs, just to colour that in. Um, but other than that, you know, just go over it with some normal paints now. And that has saved you a whole lot of time. That saved you probably a, a good half an hour work or so on that horse, um, just for that. So, so it's not bad. It's pretty good. It's a good, good little tool. 
and I think on little things like this or even on terrain um, it's, it's an awesome little, little um, helper now we'll go back to the um, black Templar because we're going to go back to the wag um, and I am going to put some of that down black Templar we're really going to um, let's see here just going to pull that out until it's like really thin and we're going to go over the wag's face so over pretty much all the wag's face and we're going to go over there dun, dun, dun. And over the whole wag's face oh lord of the rings music in the background <clears throat> so we're just going to go over the face over the nose over the eyes it doesn't really matter at this point um, we have a wee bit of brown in there as well just to give it a wee bit extra definition but for the most part we're just using that black now if you stuff it up it's easy like I said you just go over again with more white and you've just got to be careful that you don't do it too thick because you start losing that detail but but you can just go around there around there around the nose done and dusted you could do the same for the, which I would do for the legs which is just go over the legs really quickly Hopefully you can see that. It's just like, it's just giving them like little mittens, you know. Little black mittens. Just to go up there like that. Coolio. Real rough, real rough. And then, uh, rough. <laughs> Wag puns. So you're just, you're just slapping that on, really. There's not too much to it, really. Might need a wee bit more on there. So my first impressions of contrast are really cool. I hope that they can come out with something a bit later on that could almost be like a metallic um, colours. I think that that would really help uh, a lot of different people with their armies and things. Um, because metallics is something that uh, I struggle with sometimes. I, I, I find that that tends to be the longest part of my process for... G double G, well Lord of the Rings models or um, or Middle Earth models in particular is the armor is tends to be the the longest part for me uh, because you have to be quite um, I, I don't want to say accurate but you've got to you know armor is a is a what they call a focal point on a model so that's one of the first things that you look at um, that in the face and, and of course there's a certain amount of models that have different focal points for different areas so like if we're looking at the wag here his focal point is uh, where are we wrong end this this part here his face and his shoulders is his focal point you're not so much looking at the legs here um, mainly because it's in shade but if you're looking at it this part here because it's the furthest forward we associate that with like the focal point um, also because it's centered but like if it's out here you're noticing that this part here is your focal um, so there's little things like that which uh you know that contrast paint helps with immensely so i think that if you could get that in a metallic like a, like silvers or grays or whatever that would be sweet um i have no idea how they would do that but you know there's always hope and we'll just finish off the top of his ears here bop, bop, bop. okay so that's what we're looking at at the moment you're probably looking like well his face is way too black um it's it's not you know it's not going to stand out, but it will. It'll, it'll lighten up when it dries. Um, now, the last touch for him, just to get him to that rough and ready stage, is going to be adding some of the Fire Slayer Flesh. Fire, fire Slayer Flesh? Yeah, it's a weird way they've spelt it. Um, and that's just going to be to do his mouth. It'll come in here. It's just the fleshy part. You probably could do his nose like this as well, I would imagine. It doesn't have to be accurate. And we've got a wee bit too much. See how that kind of pulls in there sometimes? You want to just take that away. You don't want too much pulling in there. And you can just do that by drying your brush and then dragging it back through there. And it'll just take that out. That side looks fine. So, that's what you're left with. I'll just close that up and give that a quick rinse and I will show you what we're looking at. So, the horse, not bad, good size, 
see that there. So that's pretty much good to go. Do paint in his eye, paint on the reins. Um, you know, complete his hoofs with the um, with that black Templar, perhaps. Away you go. You could probably paint some white socks on him if you wanted socks on him. Um, here's the wag. Now I will get a couple that I've prepared earlier and show you just what we can do with them. And we're back. Here is one that I have uh, prepared earlier. So you can see he's got a little bit, of, this is a little bit of a different color scheme. This one was actually snake bite leather um, with the gray face. I haven't highlighted his face yet, but you can see his mouth detail there. This, now bear in mind, this is still rough. This is still early stages. I haven't done any extra painting. This is all just contrast. So what I did for this is I just put a wee bit of a dark brown on his back just for that light fur, which is a, an inverse to the ones that we saw on the packet before where they had dark fur and light up the top. But he's got dark fur up the top. Went for a hyena pattern on this guy. Um, very themey with the Lion King at the moment and of course what we can do here is just get some um, lighter greys and highlight up his face afterwards um, which is probably something I will do but one of the things um, you'll notice is that there's a bit of a difference in the fur now what I did afterwards is so you, you've gone through and used your contrast paints just get a dry brush and, and pick a light um, sort of a blondy um, brownie color and just do a, like a really light dry brush over the top and that'll just bring that fur out so so there we have it, that's the um, the wags, and of course that is the um, the horse as well. Now here is a uh, Rohan horse that I had uh, basically fully painted, and, and this guy's pretty much tabletop standard now I think. Um, once he gets a, you know, do his base up, uh, should be fantastic. Uh, and of course that was all done with contrast paints, just smashing that out. So you can do it all with that. Um, and then if I wanted to afterwards, I could come through and pick a similar color to this, a bit lighter, do work some highlights up on the, on the tops through here, uh, on the wee parts of the legs here. Uh, and there are great tutorials on Pinterest of how to um, pick out uh, the different parts of the horse legs and things and there's also on the GW website I think the uh, Jay and the guys go through and show you how to highlight horses and different bits and bobs so um, Have a look out for that too um, But anyway guys, this has been a relatively long video. I'll wrap it up there I hope you've enjoyed it uh, a little bit of a of my first um, painting tutorial for you guys and um, we want to You know continue this little theme and up next. We're probably going to have something uh, a little bit Oh, different again we're going to have a show you how to paint up uh, a celtic warrior from the warlord set um, but i will see you in the next one uh, and please like and subscribe if you like these videos i'll keep doing them i mean i can do different videos um on painting or use how to use contrast paints effectively but um, other than that guys i'll see you in the next one